And thanks for being with us here on Morning Live. Now, the Pretoria High Court has found that South Africa's Administrative Adjudication of Road Traffic Offences, or the ARTO Act and the ARTO Amendment Act, are unconstitutional. And this comes after civil society group, the organization Undoing Tax Abuse, ALTA, approached the court in October last year to declare both the main act and the amendment act unconstitutional. And in her ruling, Judge Anli Basson ruled in favor of ALTA, agreeing that the legislation legislation unlawfully intrudes upon the exclusive executive and legislative competence of the local and provincial governments stated in the constitution, thereby preventing local and provincial governments from regulating their own affairs. Advocate Stephanie Fick is the executive director and heads uh, the accountability division at Outer, and she joins us now. Uh, welcome to Morning Life, Advocate Fick, and uh, thanks so much for speaking to us. It's only a pleasure. Good morning. Uh, so, uh, firstly, this, of course, uh, didn't come as a surprise to Outa, I would imagine, because you were very confident all along about uh, this uh, particular outcome. So talk to us about your reaction. Um, yeah, um, it, is, it has been um, tremendous. Um, I have to say, you know, thank you to each and every one. We can't do this if we're not supported by, um, you know, activists out there and South Africans. But what is important, and, 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 and it's always, it, that is heartwarming, is that, you know, motorist South Africans deserve legislation that is constitutionally sound. I have to say that this doesn't mean all of a sudden that people can drive, you know, whatever way they want. Um, this does not promote lawlessness. The crimes are still there. You still can't drive recklessly and negligently. You still can't park wherever you want. But we need legislation in this country that, that the department can administer, um, that is rational, and that is fit for purpose. And what was the purpose? They thought that R2 would curb road deaths, that it would promote road safety. And unfortunately, I haven't seen, we haven't seen the numbers in, in Gauteng and Joburg since 2008 when the original R2 was rolled out. Um, and it is an elaborate administrative system that right from the start, I think, you know, was, was just impractical. So let's talk about what made it impractical, because uh, part of your argument as outer to the court uh, was that uh, this auto legislation unlawfully intrudes upon the exclusive executive and legislative competence of local and provincial governments as specified in the Constitution, therefore uh, rendering it unconstitutional. Uh, you also um, argued that it prevents local and provincial governments from regulating their own affairs. So let's break that down, um, Advocate Fick, in terms of what what exactly it means in our constitution what it means is that national has authority over certain um, um, things you know uh, uh, certain things that they have to do so you get national legislation but then the constitution also gives a province and also gives a local government the authority to regulate certain things and some of that things that they can regulate is something like parking and traffic. In other words, here in Joburg, we can, we can, as a, the municipality, can decide that they they want to regulate traffic at a certain point. So, um, and they can also regulate that. Okay, I don't want people to park here at a certain time. And if you do, I think a fine of two hundred rand is appropriate. Um, it is not for national government to tell local government what to do because. Each and every jurisdiction sort of differs. And I think that that is why it was envisaged in the Constitution, because the municipality in Pretoria and Joburg is not the same. There's certain issues, but they're just geographically, the different municipalities and the different provinces looks differently. I mean, that's just maybe a stupid example. But um, so it is about why do we have a municipality? Why do we have local government if they can't do what they're supposed to do in terms of the constitution? Um, so maybe just this practical example, in terms of R2, if you want to make representations, and, 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 and for example, you, you, you received a, um, a ticket, you weren't the driver, you parked, it, it alleges that you parked in the wrong spot, um, you go to a national body, you make representations to the RTIA, that's a national body. 
not a local government body. Um, if you follow the R2 Amendment Act in the process, very elaborate um, a process, but at the end, this appeals tribunal, yet again, people that sit in, on the national sphere and may not necessarily understand the, the intricacies of a specific situation in a local government. So, um, Advocate Fick, you mentioned Tswane and the city of Johannesburg. So, the Arto Act was passed in 1998 and um, has been applied in these two metros. But I think one of the issues here has been the fact that not many South Africans are actually aware of what this Arto Act actually does. And also, in terms of um, universal application, we know that the minister was talking about uh, the, uh, the implementation starting, um, what was it going to be? Um, uh, uh, there was the phasing in. It became a phased-in yeah. approach. Mm -hmm. uh, but with that said, firstly, we don't know much. So how does it differ from one municipality, one province to the next, uh, given that you had the Arto in Twane and in um, the city of Johannesburg, but what was happening elsewhere? You've got Arto and then you've got uh, um, uh, the um, Criminal Procedure Act, both at play. So how do they differ and what does this mean? For the rest of the country, if you take away um, Twane and Joburg, um, dealt with traffic infringement infringement like they always did. You know, there's municipal courts, traffic courts that can deal with um, fines, you get a ticket. The R2 um, uh, Act, I think what the department tried to do, and, and, if, and, 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 in, and in conversations and with making comments in Parliament and so forth, it is clear that they wanted to make it an administrative system and they wanted to take this whole process um, out of the court system because they, they said that at that time that it takes too long. Now, uh, in my mind, uh, uh, why not then give resources and making sure that that part of the system is resourced? But um, that is just my personal opinion. So they wanted an absolute administrative system. Um, and, 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 and I think coupled with that with this was this demerit point system that was part of the, the, the act, was, but never enacted. Because I think that they they realise that it is um, that it it will not work. The main difference is this elaborate process. You start off, and and, and, and it is worrying that not a lot of people understand the process, understand their rights, which the department was supposed to educate people in their in, in this rollout phase. Um, so it is really, you know, there's infringement notices, there's um, courtesy letters, there's enforcement orders, there's revocation of, of, of fines. You can go, um, in, in terms of the new act, you can go to an appeal tribunal. I think people's minds just start spinning. And for what? This is all for minor offences, not for your drunk driver will still be arrested, whether artery is applicable or not, because it's a serious offence, you want that guy to go to jail. Now, I think it is. it was a noble idea. And are we against a demerit system? Most probably not. People should be held accountable. We've been screaming from the rooftops that the state capturers should be held accountable. But you should have a system that you can administer. And I think the proof was in the pudding. In Joburg and Swanee, they ran out of money and couldn't serve um, infringement notices on motorists. So um, the effectiveness of, of, of the act was proven in the beginning to not be as effective. Um, so I think, law, what about more visible policing? Let's just spend the resources on getting more traffic officials. That can actually stop um, the guy that's driving like a maniac and speeding down um, the roads and putting people's lives in danger. Um, uh, write a ticket to the person that's parking illegally. So there's other ways, and hopefully this will encourage government to go to the experts, not just ALTA, all civil activist organizations, people that functions um, um, in, in, in this sphere, and let's get legislation in place that will actually encourage road safety, because that's important. Uh, so... 
The outcome of uh, yesterday's uh, court ruling, does this in any way, shape or uh, form affect ordinary motorists uh, that have been affected by the Arto Act uh, where it was rolled out in Tswane in Johannesburg? You know, I, I don't really think so. I think um, um, what you have to keep in mind is that since last year there hasn't been any camera fines because um you know the municipalities did not um uh, renew their contracts with contractors because you know they we contract these things instead of um, um creating jobs and, and 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 giving this to 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 um uh, officials you know it's contracted out um there's also this whole thing about if you if 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 you, if you if the RTIA does not give you a fine um, soon after the infringement, then the whole pro process falls flat. Um, so uh, I can't see how this will impact on, 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 on motorists. We're just going back to the situation that was there uh, pre-2008, which means you'll still get a ticket, but you don't have to consider this whole um, administrative nightmare process. Um, plus, if you, if you are guilty and you elect to, you know, you want to go to court and you want to fight it, you run the risk of, of getting sentenced. So um, it's not as if we did not have processes in place before or two. Um, what the department will do is another question, and, 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 and this is maybe where we should start opening the conversation as to how can we also assist them in this transition period? Because I don't think that they realise... Um, what they should do. The RTIA, for example, was brought to light in terms of this act, what's going to happen there. Um, and, 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 but in terms of accountability and making sure that our roads are safe, the impact, we just need to enforce our laws. Mm. Advocate Vic, as you say, it remains to be seen what the department will do and hopefully we'll get uh, them on to give us uh, their views and, of course, the way forward in terms of uh, the legal avenues that are still open to them. Uh, but uh, Outer previously said that um, if the court, even if the court uh, would have found this law to be consistent with the Constitution, that Outer would still further oppose Section 17 of the Amendment Act. So let's talk about the Amendment Act, what that would have done. And uh, this was, of course, also found to be unconstitutional yesterday. Yes. Now, the Amendment Act, no, not that that is necessarily unconstitutional, the Amendment Act took away your right to go to court completely. You could only now, for the first time, go to a match court on a review or an appeal if you are unhappy with the appeals tribunal. Again, administrative process. I don't want to confess. It really is an elaborate um, um, administrative process. But one of the things that also changed is how you get to know about your notices. So let, let's break this down. Legal processes normally, it's um, you're either getting served in person or you get it by via registered post. That has been part of our legal justice system for, for, for forever. So in terms of the old act, that was the process. But I think because I realised that it's costing them a lot and, um, uh, and, it, and it failed because they ran out of budget, they decided that they're going to pull in this whole idea of a, um, Electronic Communications Act, that they can actually serve you with your notice via email. Now, in principle, people will say, but don't we want to move to, to, you know, to easier communications? Everyone has got cell phones. We can get it over the phone and, and all of that. Now, firstly, the principle is this is a serious process. This is really a very serious process. If you do not get your notice, you may end up not being able to renew your license, which appears to be a problem in any case. Um, but so we are saying that if you look at the consequences of not receiving your notice, it is the duty of a department to make sure that someone is, is alerted to something that is against their name. And it is still a process, although administratively it's still a process. And that um, um, that it, it, it one should consider that if, if if an email goes to junk mail, you know what is going to um, what is going to happen. But what I think we've realised now, and this is more from a practical point of view, that although our administrative system is not necessarily 
um, unconstitutional. You must be able to administer your process. It must be rational. And unfortunately, we are now seeing that this administrative process, whether it is electronically or not, can create problems for South Africans, for citizens, for motorists. Now, if you are not able to make sure that the one machine that you have is, is maintained in order to give that service to, 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 to motorists, I don't know how you would have been able to administer this process to the best interest of motorists. And just finally, um, Advocate Fick, what alternatives uh, do you propose as ARTA um, as a way forward in fighting traffic breaches? Because as you yourself mentioned, this is something that needs to be dealt with and dealt with urgently uh, when it comes to non-compliance with road safety rules. I think we need to spend more resources on education. I think let's teach our um, uh, children, and it's a general, not just road safety. I think we need to um, educate um, 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 uh, children to be law-abiding citizens. So you need to give them an example. You need to be the example um, as government. But what about visible policing? More um, traffic officials that can monitor um, the behaviour of motorists and take the, the motorist that's not behaving properly off the road. How do you catch a person that is driving with an unworthy car? You're not going to catch him with a camera. You, you need a person to pull that car off the road, give him a ticket and, 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 and take, the, um, uh, take the car. How do you catch a person that is parking illegally? How do you catch a drunk driver? How do you catch a, a, a person that is driving recklessly and negligently? Create opportunities, create jobs, and get us more visible policing. The one year, and it wasn't a scientific um, research, but the one year we saw sort of a drop in, 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 in road accidents and fatalities and so forth was the year of the World Cup. Why? We had more visible policing. So it is a way of telling people, you know what, we're watching you, and um, we are not going to allow you. So you instill... Um, 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 something in motorists that would say, I want to abide by the laws because there's consequences. We need to understand, um, and, and, and the person that is thinking about contravening um, the law needs to know that there's consequences. Well, Advocate Stephanie Fick, thanks so much uh, for your time this morning. Executive Director and Head of the Accountability Division at Alta, giving Alta's reaction following the organization's victory in the Pretoria High Court against the Department of Transport's administrative adjudication of road traffic offences, also known as the Alta Act and the Amendment Act yesterday. So a uh, few quick... Um, uh, uh,